All right, this is another episode of Israel and Asia. We're now today we're going to be talking about the Scythians or the Sakas. Uh, I hope I get better at uh, as I do these. Um, I know my reading is not the best. I will redo the original one that I made in the beginning. You can still watch it. You can still get the content. However, I um, plan on getting better throughout the presentation. But today, the Scythians and Saka. Uh, we're going to cover the same map as we do in all the presentations to see where they came from and where they went. So as I mentioned, this is your map. This is from uh, the Lost Tribes, a myth. This is in that book and it shows all the routes and locations where the Israelites went or where they followed and traced us to identify where they have been in Asia. Uh, most of the northern tribe did go through Asia and uh, identify themselves by different names, hence the name, the Scythians and Saka. But what you will see today is that that name is prevalently known throughout the um, throughout Asia. So the Scythians, as you can see in the top right by the Caucasus Mountains, you have the Scythians arrived 600 BC. And they were expelled at 600 BC up in this location where the Caucasus Mountains are. Of course, they were probably pushed out by the, ca the Caucasians or by other nations. But the Scythians did migrate over to Asia and was eventually pushed into Tarity, into the Hindu Kush, and throughout all of Asia, as you can see throughout all the in, um, print throughout this map. In addition, we also want to talk about the migration all the way over to Japan where you have the Chadas. The Chadas is a, um, name, a name that was used too uh, for the people of Israel. So where did the Scythians come from? So basically, this is for education re, re, um, so, so people can understand. When you give history, the cool part is you want to have the history and with the Bible content. So Bashir. Bashir was one of the main lands in the northern tribe. When you got Ephraim and Manasseh, and Bashir was the name of the land for the northern tribe, which was also called Scythianpolis. Um, so that nation, and they were, of course, sent into slavery in Babylon, as you can read through the um, scriptures. But before they were sent into captivity, they also lived in, in Israel. It was a land mass in Israel near Samaria, and they was ultimately put into slavery. Once they migrated out of slavery, they became nomads and the Scythians ultimately migrated over to East into the Turkish lands, the, the, um, the Indians, as well as the Arabians. So they became part of the Arabian trade in the East and the uh, Indian Ocean trade. So there will be more presentations that will cover more of that. But right now we're going to focus on the Chadas, the Scythians and the Sakas. Now, this is just a little bit of brief history with a picture from uh, the Philippines that uh, does show that some people do practice that in Asia now. But Bashir is a city in the territory of um, Issachar um, assigned to Manasseh, out of which the Canaanites were not driven. In the days of Israel's strength, they were put to task work. They doubtless were in lead with the um, Palestinians who, after Israel's defeat on Galbo, explo um, exposed the bodies of Saul and his son on the wall of the city. So they put their bodies on a wall. Now that's actually like, they actually nailed it, probably put the bodies on the wall without a casket. I don't know. I wasn't there, but they did put their bodies on a wall. Hence, they were rescued by the men uh, who remembered um, the early kindness of the king and the name um, and in first uh, Kings 412 the name applied to the district in which the city stand it was called Scythians or Sapopolis by the Greeks so the Greeks call this by this name and it says basically this may be connected to the invasion of the Palestines by the Scythians so this is a practice that still happens this definition was found on Bible, Bible Hub, and 
as you can read in 1 Samuel 31.10, and they put their armor in the house of Ath Athrath, and they fastened the bodies, his body, on the wall of Bashir. So this is a practice that was practiced in that kingdom. Is it pet? Was it uh, a custom of Israel? No, it was not. It was a custom of the people in that land. However, it's just a coincidence that custom has migrated all the way out to the Philippines. So let's cover this book. Now, this book is called Lost Tribes and the Saxons. You will learn that the Saxons is uh, this actually has a meaning for Isaac in the east and the west. So I'm only going to cover a portion of this because uh, you can go get the book and read it for yourself. But the goal is to put enough content on here so you can read it for yourself and find out what you think that you want to latch on to. But let's read over here on 108. The only Hebrew equivalent for the name of the people called by the Latins Sakar and the Greeks Sakar is that already given as the equivalent of Bashir inscribed. In English, the Sakar or Saxons, the, the Sakar that had some remarkable bear, uh, bearing upon the Babylonians is evident from the singular festivals celebrated among them called Sakar or Sakar. So basically, even when it was in Babylon, they had a festival called the Sakars. So this name is kind of this name is not too new. It morphed into different types of spellings over time, depending on what nation or translations, depending on which language. So if you uh, let's see right here, um, in the in the Bush, uh, Bush, Beth Tuss inscription. We find three classes of Sakaras referred to on page 150, namely the Sakar name next to India, the Sakar who use arrows, and the Sakar who are said to be beyond the river. We therefore find them scattered very, um, very widely and no longer constituting one people or nation, although evidently one race, which is just the condition in which we should expect the house of Isaac to be at the time under the circumstances to which we know they must have been exposed first from the separation in their early captivity and then from the wars and divisions in the countries they occupied. The river referred to must have been either ty Tigers or Euphrates. So they explained that Sakira became the name of multiple people throughout the land of Asia, depending on different descriptions and details. But feel free to go find this book. This is actually excellent. You will see right here that this confirming that that name does refer to Israelites. So, basically, we have more screenshots of this book. Uh, once again, I ain't gonna lie, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna be ashamed for it. I do take content sometimes. Uh, if I see somebody sharing the same stuff, I will take their screenshots because um, I do actually have the download of the book. But let's look at this. And so, Reverend J. Fox, that that there are many of the children of Israel of the tribe of Nathali, Zebulon. In the Hindu Kush, that's in Afghanistan, among the Balk we and that they live by robbery and know and known the ex uh, the exclamation Shema Israel, oh hear O Israel. So basically, this is just confirmation that Israel was in Asia as well as Afghanistan. So now let's figure out what ISS uh, Sakir means. He says, we have supposed them to have been named Sakir or Sakar after Isaac. And here in the very seat of the Sakir of old, we find large numbers of people professing to be Israel calling themselves. 
uh, Isis, a name readily converted into Sakara by the Greeks, who inhabitantly rendered the name of the barbarians only into a proximate sound. So basically, they named them based on the sound of the name they heard or how it sound to them. It is possible to account for these facts, but on the supposition that they are diverse, divert, diverted from the real Ben Israel, meaning they pretty much they are they are offcast from uh, the northern tribe, Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. And as you can see on this bottom square, you have the 10 tribes. So we're talking about 10 tribes, not the 12, because don't forget, they're talking about the outcasts and they're now not from the original stock. And that's what they're really trying to say here. So just a little bit of content of Saka. Now, finally, I get to show one of these books, The Library of Political Secrets. You might want to find this. It's a good short volume, both multiple uh, regions covering Jews in those areas and what they found. Uh, if you look up the, if you Google the word fifth column, you'll find that very interesting and entertaining. I highly recommend everyone has a different analytical brain. I find it entertaining in what I see when I re, re, um, look up that word. So let's read. Jewish leaders Rabbi Jacob Risen uh, writes as following. Some explorers find traces of the impact of Judaism and probable conversions also in the empire of Japan. They pointed to two villages which bear the name of Goshen and Manasseh. Here, there, I'm sorry, is the legend that, that, the legend that during the third century, a party of foreign silk traders, and if you go back to the map, you'll see the Silk Road in there, uh, uh, silk traders appeared in the empire and that by the year four, 471 they numbered 18 and 60 18,670 a temple in front of which figures is of a lion and a unicorn called Buddha dogs kept watch is claimed to be to have been a synagogue that then known as the tent of David, which was erected by them on the spot which they first settled. They were highly respected and were known as the Chadas or the beloved. So the Chadas means the beloved. On the site belonging to one of the Chadas families, there is a well some 1500 year old upon the curb um, crumbling of which are engraved the word Israel so if you see this the Chata so when I saw this word Chata I had to find okay what is that so I, I did google it and if you go up to the map that we talked about earlier it did have Chata as the name for the Jews in that region so definitely find this book uh, I think on my presentations, I cover some of the contradiction contradiction in this um, book that tells you that there are two types of uh, Jews in this book. So you have to be well versed and, under, and, um, and learned to know which one is the real Jew and which one is the false Jew. Uh, one is a crypto Jew. The other one is a crypto Jew. But the one crypto Jew enslaves the other crypto Jew. you got to read that till you understand that it, can, it confirms the the scriptures that you know those that call say they are jews but are not it's in these books it tells you right there um so just go read these books it's going to be a good treat to get some understanding for those that are learned or for those that are not learned you can see the lies and deceptions all throughout these books so when i looked at the word chata it brought me to this book now if you really want to be entertained and get over your Stockholm syndrome. Yeah, you're gonna to want to read this one. Um, the Yellow Perel is an interesting book. Um, this gentleman here, he definitely hates Israel. He definitely hates Jews. He is very, very frank. Uh, these are only a few pages that I just put in this presentation. The man is really like 
he 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 tells it all. He he does not hold back. This is the book was written. I guess it's not this book is not old. It's not an old book actually, but he's telling his true agenda and it's really entertaining. So you want to really look at this and just take a look at what it says about you know Japan uh, and, and and the Jews in Israel in Japan. So on the first page it says one of one or uh, one uh, or the other of them. I believe basically he's saying that this guy wrote this article and he said, oh, I believe one or the other. One thing that I do believe is a real chestnut, meaning a real thing, is that the title of the Japanese emperor, Makito, is Hebrew for Migat. And therefore mean that he is a descendant of the lost tribe of Gad. That caught me off guard. Now, I could be totally wrong. Um, well, as I find these things, I look it up, I research it. I did Google, I did do a translate, I did type in, uh, I did type in Gad in English and had it translated to, to Japanese and it did say, uh, Gido. Um, then you got the me, me Gad, me Gad, me Gido, or Makito in this case. So definitely give it a try, check it out. It's a very interesting fact. That it means me Gad. So it looks like Gad was out there too. If we pay attention to the cicadas, the cicadas were uh, a mixed multitude of the tribes. Uh, you had Manasseh, you had Ephraim, you had you had those guys on this side of the world as well, but calling themselves uh, Scythians or Saka. So next page. Uh, we cannot even guess how many Jews who looked like Japanese perished in the severe massacre of Christians. Oh, so they're supposed to be you know, massacring Christians. Nor yet how many Morenos there were among the Japanese who are said to have clandestinely continued their, their practice of the forbidden cult after it had been officially suppressed. What cult are they talking about? Keeping the commandments. They was like they were totally against uh, the Israelites. So the set of saying keeping the commandments or practicing Judaism, in this case, they call it cult. By this time, they're like trying to make them seem, um, uh, you know, they marginalize us. You know, they do all this stuff to make it seem like we're doing something hateful. And we really we were just trying to keep the commandments. So basically, they confirming that they killed and massacred a lot of Israelites that happen to look Japanese. That's the key point here. Um, it's hard to accept for myself even is to see, okay, they're you're trying to tell me they're Israel that look like um, like a Moabite. That's kind of hard to find. That's kind of hard to take. But I guess we got to look, we got to stand back and save the spirit bear witness. Let's see what happened. Um, you know, pray for all of us because uh, this is Northern Tribe and I do not want to be and during our, in our in the return of Christ, if, no, if this is Northern Trap, I want them to get it right too and keep the commandments. So now let's look on this other side. Let's last one. Christianity, though false, <laughs> I love this part. Christianity, though false, is inherently superior to all religions, equally false. Let me read that again. Christianity, though false, is inherently superior to other religions, equally false. For a good presentation of the Christian views. So the martyrs, the martyrs of uh, Nawasaki, they go that Saki, see, Saki, Nawasaki, uh, by uh, Frederick Vince William, which recorded, which records the claim that after the official suppression of Christianity in 1640, tens of thousands of Japanese continued to practice. The forbidden coat, oh, there we got a forbidden coat again, secretly in the privacy of their home. And that there was even a kind of clandestine uh, church that um, renevident, reneered a martyr named uh, Beston and had some 30,000 members. These secret coats surfaced after 1865 when christianity was again tolerated whether they whether any of many 
of the crypto Christians or were also crypto Jews. There you go. That's the coat you talk. That's the coat you now you see. That's the coat is of course anyone's guess, meaning they don't know. They can't really confirm it because I mean they was keeping it a secret in the first place. All they know is that if they did something even close to keeping the Sabbath, wearing fringes, or doing this or not eating pork, they were considered in a cult and they made it they 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 pretty much victimized and made it taboo to keep the commandments. And this is what these people were doing. And once again I'm gonna say these are people that look Japanese. Um I'm still trying to uh, I found this just today and I was wondering like how do I deal with this? Um like I said, let's just you know teach and put this out here so that people can learn. And if a person that's from Japan you know witnessed this, by the way, Jesus is black. Israelites are black and they ultimately mixed in with the Japanese and now look Japanese. Um so if you're spirit bear witness with this, you're probably Israel. Let's see what happened. So not only in Japan um, did they have Israel, but they also uh, claim they had Israel in in China. So they cover a lot. And this is in the same book. A lot of uh, discussions about them, just a large amount of uh, people they believe that are in China that are still Israel. Um, this is still hard for me to, to to deal with and understand and see if this is true. But um, I got to take it. I got to take it for its value. The map shows you that Israel, the the Scythians and the Sakas were over in this area, migrated, um, became Morenos, you know, clandestine Jews, hit out in a mango, started looking like Japanese, so obviously started looking like Chinese. Uh, this is a link for the individual on this on this um, that we're talking about here. Um, basically, this Jewish banker who had a quiet outward appearance of Chinese. One of his daughters married Dr. Sung, uh, while another married Cheng uh, Kunshi. Both of these females, fire bands, uh, fire brands looked like Chinese, and were graduate and were graduate and were graduated from Wesleyan College in the United States. Although uh, Bacon Bakti Bakenti does not say so anyone who inspect a good photo uh, photograph of him will see that this that the man that this man was not a pure mongolian and will surprise and will supr um, suspect that the other side of his here um heredity went back to abraham so basically, they're saying he's half Mongolian, half Hebrew, so or half Israelite. Bottom line is they're claiming that the inner mango, the the cake not turned, a confusion of faces, is that there's a remnant throughout China, and Japan. Um, now, did we can confirm that there was a slave trade? There was slavery in, in, in Asia of Israelites. That is true. Um, were they sent into Asia through slavery or they just came out of slavery? The, I don't have that detail yet for this for for Japan and China per se. However, that's we definitely know slaves were sent out of China. That is true. Um, and slaves were sent out of Japan. That is true. And then if you look at this picture, if you look at this guy, like I said, here's the links below. You can look up the name of the of this individual, so actually see what he looks like and his family. He was very wealthy. If you keep reading, you will find out that he was ran. Actually, it's read, it's read on it's actually on here. Is that uh after um one of the most successful uh, of the warlords um was Chang, who looked like or may have been a real Mongolian, meaning he was 100% Japanese. I mean uh, Chinese. Or one of the one of the two, and seem throughout his life to have been directed by his wife, Sung, after he broke uh, after he broke with the communists, he proved himself a competent general and eventually ruled over or over most of China until the until the Americans. Let's read this with 
the treachery, uh, treachery for which they are now famous betrayed him to the Soviet control communists and he barely escaped to set up a government in exile on the island of from a uh, formal formosa often called uh, taiwan so basically he fled but so basically what happened is they forced a person that had power that had israelite blood in him and gave it over to the communist leader so that the communists could control china but you wanted to get rid of the Israelite, but yet we're against the communists. Just curious. So if you uh, take a look at this book, it's a great read. Um, this photo over here, I find it very fascinating. This is a, a picture, a photo of his wife outfit. If you take a quick look at the dress, you will notice those that practice in keeping the commandments you will see something about the dress that looks very, very, uh, very, very traditional and can be keeping the commandments. So I can't knock this picture. I can't say that they're not Israel. Who am I to judge? I'm not. We do not post argue over lineage. But at the end of the day, these men, these men, they're not they're not claiming these guys are Israel because they want to try to prove the Chinese are Israel or that Japanese were Israel. No, they know they're Israel because they was trying to destroy them. So make sure you understand when you read these books, there's a book that say, oh, yeah, everybody's Israel. No, 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 no. These guys did not care. If you read the book, you will realize it, it wasn't a book about, oh, these guys are Israel. No, it was like these guys are Israel and I hate them and I'm trying to destroy them. How do I get rid of them? How do I kill them? How do I enslave them? That was the goal. So. It persecution never fails. It always follows. So realize that uh, we have a we have a remnant in China and Japan. Uh, I don't know what we can do with this. If you got more some comments, uh, share please how we want to deal with this. Uh, those that are on the western side of the hemisphere. But for now, this is the Israelites on the east side of the hemisphere. And there's plenty of material out there that's saying that we have plenty of them out here. All right. Well, you enjoy.